Now that we've looked at the core principles of Redux, we're gonna dive a layer deeper into some of the core concepts. So some of the terminology that we described in the previous video, we're just going to take a deeper look into what those are so we can understand the bigger picture. So let's go ahead and get started with the five things that we want to actually cover in this particular video. So number one is the single state tree. Now we covered this in the previous video and we discussed the concepts of a single state tree and how we can actually ask for properties on our state tree and the idea behind how we could actually use it. Now we also have these things called actions, which if you've taken a look at Redux before or NGRX store, you'll have definitely come across the term of actions. We've also discussed reducers, we've also discussed the store, and we're also going to look at one-way data flow and how it fits in the bigger picture. So let's go ahead and first off, we're going to look at the single state tree in a little bit more detail. So a single state tree is essentially just one big plain JavaScript object. It's not some mystical thing that we need to be too concerned about. But the idea is everything is kept as one big object and it's composed by reducers. So let's assume that we just have some kind of data structure and when we want to run an initial state for the data structure, or we want to update part of our data structure, we can actually do this via our reducers. So we have the state tree, we have the reducers. The only way to update the state tree is via a reducer. Now we'll come onto this momentarily, but first let's look at in plain JavaScript terms, what this state tree might look like. Now as a real basic example, we can do const state equals a new object, which has a new property called to do's, which is just an empty array. Now this is an easy example because it's just one property which holds an array. Now you can imagine that the applications that you build day by day have a much more complex data structure than an array. However, the idea is that we just have all of the properties that we want to contain our data structure on this one state object. And we'll actually use this example to actually show you how the process of Redux actually works. So we've got just a state, it's got the to-dos property and it holds an empty array. So we can just keep hold of that knowledge to know that any collections, data structures, all live in this single state tree. Secondly, let's move on to actions. We've discussed actions briefly in the previous video, so let's dive a little bit deeper into understanding what they actually are. Now let's assume that we want to actually add a to-do item to our state object. We need to actually go ahead and dispatch an action. So this is where perhaps a component would indicate to the store, okay, we have a new to-do, we need to go and actually add this to our state object. Now the action has two properties. It has a type, which is a string. And all this type does is simply describe the event that is happening. Now this could be add underscore to do. And we'll look at a code example momentarily after this slide. We also have the payload. Now the only one that is required when dispatching an action is the type property. So we always need the type and the payload is optional. Now there may be some cases where we do not need a payload, which is why it's considered optional. Now, if you think for an initial page load, we might have a load to do's. We don't actually need to pass a payload. It's just going to go off to our back end, make a request and bring back the actual data. Now, if we want to, for example, add a to do, we need to attach some properties to this payload. So we need to attach the new to do object that we want to actually add. So we'll look at a code example real quickly next. However, the idea is that we just dispatch an action and this action is handled by the store and passed down into our reducer. Now, as you remember, the reducer is just a pure function which accepts the state and it also accepts the action. So we'll look at this momentarily. However, first let's look at a code example of what an action may look like. So here we have const action equals a new object. We have a type and it says add underscore to do. So this is essentially describing what is about to happen in our application, we want to add a to-do. We've also attached a payload property and we have an object with a label and a complete property. So this is essentially a representation of the new to-do object that we want to add into our state array. Now, when it comes to the type, we should always keep these different because we don't want to interfere with other actions that may be dispatched. And with the payload, you can compose, you can send the data however you want as the payload. So that piece is completely up to you. The payload could be a string, it could be an object, it could be an array, 
can be anything that you like. So let's move on to talk about reducers. We've talked about reducers quite a lot from a concept perspective, but we actually want to see what they do with this action. Now these are the core things that we need to do to understand how Redux architecture actually works. So we know by now that a reducer is a pure function, and I gave you an example of adding two numbers together. So this might be a pure function where we have a and b, and we can just return a plus b, and that's a pure function that adds two numbers. Now a reducer is the same as this idea, because it allows us to test things easier, and it also allows us to only have one representation of state at a particular point in time. So let's walk through the flow of what happens when we actually have a reducer. So when we dispatch an action, the store actually passes that action into our reducer. We are given the dispatched action, and inside the reducer, we can respond to the action dot type. So in the previous slide, we had action type, and that equated to add underscore to do. So we essentially want to detect which type we're actually doing in our function, at which point we have access to the actions.payload. We then compose the new state and we return that new state. So let's have a look at an actual example. Here we've got a function reducer and the arguments are state and action. So the store will actually invoke this reducer and say, here is the current state and here is the action that you just dispatched. Inside of here, you may have seen this before, a switch statement with a few cases inside, we can respond to the action dot type. So we can say in this case of add to do, we want to create a new variable called to do, and we'll bind that as a result of the actions payload. So you can start to build a picture of how we're passing data from the action through to the reducer. So the action contains the type, it contains the payload, and we simply access those properties which are given to us via the actual reducer function, and we can compose the new state and return it. So you can see we also have const to do's equals a new array, which merges in the state. So the dot 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 state dot to do's actually merges in all the current to do's into this new array, and we simply comma separate it and add a new to do on the end. So this, in fact, with a completely empty array, will actually merge nothing in and just have one to do in that final const to do's. Now the interesting piece is the return block. So we actually need to return inside every case to make sure that we're returning that new state. So where we have return object with to do's, this is actually returning a property with the value of const to do's. So essentially it's an object, we have a to do's property with an array of items. Now this returned object is a representation of the new state. The new state is then returned to the store and bound to our single source of truth, which is our gigantic single state object. Now you can see below that we also have a return state. So this is in the case that we don't have any action.type which actually match. So we don't want to cause any errors. We want to just return the state if nothing has actually happened. Now this is also a place to set up some initial state and this will make sense as we continue throughout this course. So it's important to remember to always return the state so we can set up initial state as well as return if no action type is matched in our switch statement. So that's pretty much the simple process. And once that is actually finalized, we'll end up with a new state object that looks a little bit like this. So we'll have our const state like we did before, and we have the to do's property. But this time, as you can see in bold, I've highlighted, we have a label and we have the complete. So this is one to do that we've just added via our reducer. And this is pretty much how it works. You want to update the state, we will dispatch an action, we'll respond to the action in the reducer, and the reducer then returns the new representation of the state. So we've talked about state, we've talked about reducers, we've talked about actions. So what really is the store? You may have heard the terms, the state, the store. So what is the difference between the two? And what can the store provide us? Now the store is simply a state container. In Angular, for example, our components interact with the store. They can inject the store we can subscribe to pieces of state. So for example, we might have a to-do list component and we are only interested in the array of to-dos. Whereas on our data structure, we might have tens or hundreds of other properties nested somewhere in our data structure. A component can then dispatch an action to the store. For instance, we might have an add to-do form. And once we get that result back from our form, we can say, 
that we want to dispatch this particular action and here's the new to do. And the process that we just walked through is exactly what happens. The store then passes the previous state and the action into the reducer, invokes the function, the reducers compose the new state and the store is updated as a result of that. Now after the store has been updated, our components typically in some way subscribe to those slices of data or the whole state object if we want. So anytime the store is updated, we are immediately notified where we're asking to be notified. Now, this may be done with something like a dot subscribe. And because we are focusing on NGRX later on in this course, NGRX is written with observables, which means that when the store is updated, our component is reacting immediately and it will get given the new state without us having to invoke callbacks or do anything ourselves. So we're just in charge of taking an action, composing the new state and returning it to the store. The store will then create the new state and notify our components accordingly. Now we've also got one very important thing which we need to cover, which is one-way data flow and how everything ties together with the store and our Angular applications. So let's get started with a diagram. So you can imagine that we have just a component, it could be a to-dos component, it could be any component that you can imagine. And we also have some kind of physical object that's a store. So let's just take our to-dos example and we want to add a new to-do. In this case, we can have some kind of form submit which gives us that new to-do object and we simply want to dispatch an action from the component. So this lifecycle diagram gives you the complete data flow of how these things hang together. So the component talks directly to the store, it says, Here's a new action, we want to dispatch it, and it gets passed off to the store. Now at this point, the action is actually sent to the reducer by the store. The reducer, as we've just seen, it takes the action type, it can have access to the action's payload, and it can compose that new state. So once we've got this new state, our store is in charge of updating the state property that lives inside the store. Once everything has been merged and updated, we then get given those results back to our component where we can then go ahead and just re-render to reflect the update of our state object. So this is the complete cycle of how things happen and you can see that the arrows here point in a single direction. So the component, the arrow follows up to the action, we dispatch it, it's then sent to the reducer, the reducer composes the new state which gives us again one big state object with the new representation and that is then passed down to a component or many components that we actually care about those particular pieces of data inside our application. So one way data flow is important to remember with the Redux architecture. And this also ties in with immutable operations which we'll cover in the next video. So let's move on to the next video where we can talk about the difference between mutable and immutable operations in JavaScript.